Back. Good morning, Northwest. Time is 6.52. It's time for your morning sprint. Our Mark Peterson, Peterson letting us know when we could see some snow. But we begin with our Caroline Flynn on some breaking news in Spokane Valley. She's live at the scene of a crash on Henry and Sprague. This has a power line into the street, Caroline. Well, neighbors tell me this happened just about 5 a.m. this morning, and I just got off the phone with Sheriff Deputy Mark Gregory, who told me that when deputies arrived at the scene, there was no one in the vehicle. They don't know if there were passengers, and they're currently working to get this all figured out who was driving. And as you can see right now, it's a very active scene. Uh, the tow truck is working to get this very, very damaged car that crashed into a pole onto its tow truck. Uh, uh, to the uh, right, uh, we're going to pan over right now to see this pole that is down. There is no word on how long this road will be closed. Henry Street, right off of Sprague, it's been closed now for over an hour. And uh, we will continue to update you on our social media, Facebook and Twitter, as to uh, when the road will be opened and what the cause of this crash was. Back to you, Robin and Derek. All right, Caroline, thank you. Well, he was the young man everyone hoped would lead the Cougars to victory in the fall. The WSU quarterback Tyler Halinski's story took a tragic turn. Poland Police Department confirming the 21-year-old red shirt sophomore was found dead in his apartment of an apparent suicide. The news leaves Cougar alums and fans stunned. Halinski was poised to take over as the starting quarterback at WSU this fall. He'll be best remembered for the Boise State game earlier this season, in which he came off the bench to lead the Cougs to one of the biggest comeback wins in program history. And that tragedy brings up an always important reminder. If you or someone you know is feeling lost and alone or just needs someone to talk to, please call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-8255. All right, as we look at what's happening in uh, our weather on to the west, this is going to be our Thursday. Today, it's cloud cover. Look at the clear skies into areas of western Montana and north Idaho. It's all going to be changing. We look at the radar, and yeah, it's really going to be hitting the Cascades today. It's going to be uh, landing into eastern Washington tonight. We'll have more on what we're expecting all the way into the weekend. That's coming up in a little bit. And looking ahead today, flags will be at half staff today to honor fallen Pierce County. Deputy Daniel McCartney. A memorial procession will begin at 11 this morning, starting at Joint Base Lewis McCord, ending at an auditorium on the campus of Pacific Lutheran University, where McCartney's memorial service will be from 1 to 3 today. People are encouraged to line the streets of that procession route to pay respect to McCartney's sacrifice. The man accused of a brutal attack and rape at a Spokane Valley convenience store this weekend was released from jail just two days before. Michael Rush, already a level three sex offender in Chelan County, has a lengthy criminal background was being held in the Chelan County Jail for a parole violation until January 11th. Two days later, he was arrested at that Senex zip trip where the clerk who was working says he raped and strangled her. Rush is now charged with first-degree rape and second-degree assault. Washington lawmakers are considering several bills they claim will reduce gun violence. One deals with bump stocks, a trigger modification device which allows semi-automatic weapons to fire at near automatic speeds. Others would ban high-capacity ammunition magazines to 10 rounds, require enhanced background checks for assault rifles, and safe storage of firearms in homes. If any of the bills reach the Senate floor and pass, they will be sent to the House for a vote before landing on the governor's desk. People are now trespassing on Rattlesnake Ridge near Yakima and putting their lives at risk in the process. It's extremely dangerous. The general public has no business being up there. They're doing it to go and see that 250-foot deep crack in the hillside that's threatening homes in the area. Officers say doing so is a misdemeanor that could get you arrested. Remind everyone, this is a not a sight worth seeing in person. Coming up next on Good Morning America, the house of horrors in Southern California. 13 children held captive and tortured by their own parents. What neighbors are saying about the family's strange behavior. And tears and anger as gymnasts testify about the abuse they received from Team USA Dr. Larry Nasser. Some of the biggest names in gymnastics saying they were affected. We look at what's going on in Washington, D.C. Cloudy conditions. It's cold there all the way into the mid-Atlantic and South Atlantic states. Oh, they're freezing in Florida. For us, we're warmer than Florida. We're warmer than parts of Texas. Wow. 40 for the high today, 42 tomorrow with rain expected. The mountain snows, snow level is going to be around 4,000 oh, feet. Bummer. And then falling into the weekend, that'll be good news. Mm -hmm. Friday should be a drier day, 37, but yeah, mid-30s for the weekend. All right.
And reiterating, hey, we do have fog and slick conditions, so be careful out yeah. there. We'll see it throughout GMA. It starts right now. KXLY 4 News is on now.